Hey everyone, I'm glad you're back and I'm trying to get a little jump start on my supper tonight while my husband is still at work. Um, so I've got some white beans with some ham shank in my pressure cooker over there. And I thought, well, what better to serve with our white beans than, as we call it in the South, potato cakes. And so in this video um, time here, I am going to be sharing a couple of different uh, side dish recipes that you can sort of give new life to um, from leftover side dishes. So uh, the first one we're gonna do is leftover mashed potatoes. I personally don't care for mashed potatoes reheated like it's cream potatoes. I will eat it like come the holidays. It seems like it tastes a little different. But for the most part, um, mashed potatoes are not reheated up in mashed potato form in our house. So here in the South, we call um, these potato pancakes or potato cakes. Up North, I think they call it maybe potato pancake. But here in the South, we call them good old potato cakes. And what we do is we save our leftover mashed potatoes and we add a little bit of onion and some flour, salt and pepper and we fry them up in a skillet. So it's a really good side dish um, when you have like beans and cornbread, which is what we're gonna have tonight. And it's always better to put the potatoes in the refrigerator, let them set a day or two, and then make your potato cakes out of cold leftover potatoes. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna bring you guys in a little closer and we'll get started on these potato cakes, okay? Okay. So we are gonna get started uh, on our potatoes. Um, this right here is about a cup and a half um, of just leftover mashed potatoes that I made for my husband and I the other night. So I'm just gonna drop these in my little mixing bowl. Okay, and while I've got it here before I dice up my onion, I'm gonna add one egg. my potato mixture. We're gonna set that over there to the side and then I've just, I've got three uh, leftover green onions um, that I got out of my fridge. I need to use them so I'm just gonna, sometimes I use just regular um, uh, sweet onion but with this I'm gonna go ahead and use up these green onions. So I'm just going to chop them. Oh, you guys can see this. Let me double check. Yep, you can. Um, but I'm just gonna chop these up. I probably won't use all of it, I'll see here. I have to go back and probably cut up a little just a little finer, I'll take my knife and just sort of go over it and just chop. I'm no professional dicer, <laughs> but I get it done. So that's all that matters, I guess, huh? A couple little pieces I don't want in there that I don't want to cut. Whoa, there we go. But for the most part, I think this will do it. So I'll just have these onions diced up like so, and I'm gonna put them over in my bowl. There we go, let me get the last bit of that. Okay, so that's a cup and a half of leftover mashed potatoes, one egg so far. Um, and three, not full, all the greens, but three uh, green onions. Now, I'll put a little bit of uh, fresh cracked pepper. I'll move around. I don't have my hubby here filming me on this one right now, so I'm a little out of sorts. I'm gonna put just a little bit of fresh cracked pepper in there. And good little dash of kosher salt. And I'm gonna go, here is where I have to sort of, um, and we'll, I'll let you know exactly what I uh, use in this. But to do my flour, I sort of just, um, 
go for the consistency that I know is right. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna put two tablespoons of flour to start out. We might need to add more because you want it sort of thick. You know, you don't want the potatoes runny because the egg does, the egg helps to bind it as well, but you've got to really make sure that you have enough flour so that the egg won't, um, you know, make them too runny. Stir that around and I do think I'm going to have to put at least one more tablespoon. Let's go with one more tablespoon of flour and this is just regular all-purpose flour. Okay, I'm going to go with one more. Let's see how that does. If I was just making this and not videoing it for you guys, um, I would just be dumping it in there, but I want to try and um, make sure I have a pretty good estimate on how many tablespoons. Okay, so that's four. I think I'm gonna go with one more. Okay, so I'm gonna go with one more tablespoon and I believe five will do it. Yep, looks like it's gonna do it. Like I said, you don't want it as runny as like a pancake mix, um, but you don't want it too stiff either because then it'll be dry. So this is pretty good actually. When you put it, drop it in a hot skillet, see it sort of hesitates when it, yeah. So when you put it in a hot skillet, um, you know, it's gonna set pretty fast. So this is about the consistency that we need it. So this is a cup and a half of leftover mashed potatoes, one egg, three green onion, and five tablespoons of all-purpose flour. So we've got that mixed up. Now I'm going to go get my skillet hot and then I'll bring you back and we can fry these up, okay? Okay, so I've got my skillet over here and this is just a non-stick skillet. Um, so I'm going to, it's preheated and I'm gonna put just a little drizzle of oil. You can use vegetable oil, olive oil, uh, just any kind of oil that you would like to use and we're gonna get these potatoes dropped in this skillet. Um, now I normally um, go with like a tablespoon, like a, you know, you've got your teaspoon serving spoon that you eat with. This is just a, a tablespoon, the one that's a little larger. Um, so I'm going, well, all I do is I get a good heaping spoonful like this and I drop it in my skillet. I think my skillet could probably stand to be a little bit hotter, but it'll get there. See how they're not running, so that's that consistency that you want. I was afraid I'd get my skillet too hot and then it would start sizzling and making some crazy noise, so. I'll just bump it up a little bit. And I normally like to fry um, four or five at a time. I'll do four on this round. We're gonna turn that up and let that get there. I see it's starting to bubble. So basically what we're gonna do, these won't bubble up like um, regular pancakes do, um, but normally, I mean, you can tell around the edges, uh, they start when they're starting to get done on the other side. So um, I'm gonna say probably three or four minutes on each side. And I've got my heat like on a medium high right now. Uh, I might have to turn it down a little bit here in a second, but um, that is how we get it started.
Okay, our potatoes are ready to turn. And here's another way that you can um, sort of tell if you slide your uh, skillet like that and they slide, that's a good sign that they are ready to be flipped. So, we just flip them over like so. I normally give them a little pat whenever I flip them to flatten them down just a little. And with this right here, I didn't do it today, but you can mix a little bit of grated cheese in with these. That is really good. Um, normally, if I do potato cakes with like steaks or burgers, I tend to put um, some cheese in there with it. So uh, that's really good. I mean, you can add all sorts of stuff or top it, um, but I like to add the shredded cheese at times. And then these are really good. Uh, it's a good side dish for breakfast and um, you can have them with applesauce. So I know that might sound a little weird, but they do go good together. So this is just a really good way to use up leftover mashed potatoes. And you can do it with, like I said, cornbread and beans, or uh, if you want them for a steak, top it with a little sour cream instead of a baked potato, or um, eat them with uh, burgers. My husband loves ketchup on these. He'll have ketchup on them tonight, and I think that's nasty, but that's what he likes. So. More power to him, I guess. But anyway, we're gonna get these fried up and I'll get the other ones fried up and then I'll come back and we will look at the finished product and I might have to taste test one of these since hubby's not here. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. I finished frying uh, my potato cakes and out of that pound, or pound, out of that cup and a half of leftover mashed potatoes, I got seven potato cakes out of it. So this is a very, very good, um, cheap, inexpensive side dish. Um, and actually these potatoes, a little tidbit, these potatoes, I keep those um, instant mashed, like the Idaho one, I think is what you call them. I keep those in my pantry at all times, especially for just my husband and I, because I don't want to sit here and peel a bunch of potatoes just for he and I. So I try and save the fresh peeling potatoes for when my kids are over. Um, so we normally, when we have potatoes, that's what I fix. So that little bag, I think I pay like 99 cents or a dollar per bag. Um, this is like a 50 cent side dish. So that's not really bad. Maybe we'll count your egg. Well, we're gonna estimate how we're gonna say 60 cent side dish, if that. So. That's not a bad deal, and it's a good way to use up your mashed potatoes. So, um, like I said, they're fried, they're ready. I can reheat them up later when it's time for us to eat. So I think I'm going to, real quick, whew, they're hot. I'm gonna use my fingers instead of a fork. See, let me get up here where you can see. See how they're just good. I hope you can see that. They're just good, they're moist inside, they have such good flavor. So, mm, they're very good. Just the right amount of salt. I just garnished them with a little bit of dried parsley basically for color. And uh, yeah, these are good. They're gonna go really good with my white beans and ham and my cornbread after a while. So, I'm gonna get off here right now. I'm gonna do a few things. Um, and I might just come back on here and we might make a pan of cornbread together, buttermilk cornbread, because I actually, we won't eat a whole pan of cornbread. So I think probably here, um, maybe in the next day or two, I might make some chicken and dressing. And I know it's April, it's not Christmas time, but in the South, we love cornbread dressing any time of the year. So I'm gonna get on here after a while in a little bit and we'll make our cornbread together. And then uh, here in a day or two, cause all this is gonna be filmed over a few days, here in a day or two, I will get back on and we'll have that leftover cornbread and we'll make some chicken and dressing. So I hope you enjoyed this and hang out and I will be back here. Well, it'll be like 30 seconds to you, but here in a couple of hours probably. So I will be back and we'll do our cornbread. Cornbread time. Yeah. Okay, 
so we are back like I promised. It's been a few hours actually. For you, it's only gonna be like a few seconds, but I'm going to get my cornbread started. So I have an iron skillet. Uh, that's the only way that I make my cornbread is with an iron skillet. If you are ever out and about and you see like a Lodge brand, I would highly recommend getting a good iron skillet. Keep it seasoned because you will get the best cornbread, fried steaks, anything out of a good old iron skillet, okay? So I've got my oven has preheated to 450 and we are going to go all out Southern tonight. And I'm taking about a heaping tablespoon of bacon grease and when you're in the south you save your bacon grease and you put it in the refrigerator that's just what we do here i don't use bacon grease every time but tonight i thought what the heck we're gonna do our bacon grease so we're gonna take this heaping tablespoon of bacon grease and i'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the oven and we're gonna let this bacon grease melt and get hot and then we will go back and we will mix our cornbread. Okay. Okay, so our skillet, our iron skillet with our bacon grease is in the oven and I'm gonna let that get, I'm talking hot, scorching hot, okay? So while that's getting hot, we are going to make our cornbread, okay? So I went ahead and measured this out here. I have two cups of self-rising buttermilk cornbread, uh, cornmeal. And this is actually the Martha White uh, brand of the cornmeal. And so I've got two cups in here. Now, when you put two cups in your bowl, I want you to save a tablespoon, okay? So put two cups in your bowl, dip you out a tablespoon of cornmeal. We're gonna set that to the side, okay? I'll show you that here in a minute. Okay, so we've got our two cups of cornmeal. We are going to take one egg, okay? We're going to break that egg, just one egg, okay? Then I'm going to take about an eighth cup of vegetable oil. We're gonna pour that into our cornmeal, okay? Then I'm going to pour out one and a third cup of milk. If you have buttermilk, you can use buttermilk. So I'm gonna pour one and a third. And these measuring cups like this, make sure when you pour out your uh, the amount to make sure that you get down level with your measuring cup. And you can see where one and a third, okay, right there. There's our one and a third. Okay, we're gonna pour that into our cornmeal mix. And last but not least, which is a Southern thing, you don't have to do this, but this is how we do it in the South. If you want true Southern cornbread, I just get, and I'm gonna show you, this is sugar. I'm gonna put it in my hand, okay? I have an average size hand, about that much sugar. So I don't know how much it is. Let's say a um, teaspoon. We're gonna put our sugar in our cornmeal. Like I said, you don't have to do that, but that is a true Southern thing, just a pinch of sugar here and there. Okay, so then we're going to get a whisk and we're just gonna start whisking. the whisk out and then I'll just pull in my spatula to make sure and run it around the bottom and um, the sides. Okay, so there you have your cornmeal. Okay, now we are going to set this to the side. Let me put my milk back in the fridge. And I'm going to check my uh, skillet here real quick. Let's see. Okay, we're going to give it about another minute and 30 seconds, 
and then we will come back and I'll pull that out, okay? It needs to heat up a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm gonna get my skillet of hot bacon grease out of the oven. It's been in here for about five minutes while we mixed up our cornbread, okay? So see, you got that hot iron skillet and it's full of that good bacon grease. Okay, do you remember that tablespoon of cornmeal that I told you to set aside? We're gonna take that cornmeal. This is a good way to one, test that our grease is hot. See how it's sizzling? Okay, so our grease is hot. That's a good way to test that. And then it's gonna start toasting. So when we bake our cornbread and we flip our cornbread out, you're gonna see those little golden pieces of cornmeal. Okay, so we've got our cornmeal here that's mixed and we're gonna drop it and pour it here in our hot iron skillet. See how those sides right there are starting to bubble up? That means that iron skillet is good and hot. See how it's bubbling around there? That's what's gonna give you your good outer crust. And let me tell you something, that's the best part of cornbread, okay? So we're gonna put this pan of cornbread in the oven at 450 degrees, and I'm gonna check it here in about 20 minutes. It normally takes 20 to 25 minutes. I'm gonna check it at 20 minutes, and we'll see how it's going and if it needs to cook a few more minutes. When we get it out of the oven, I'll flip this hot, plate of goodness on a pan, or a hot pan of goodness on a plate, I should say, and then we will see the finished product, okay? I'll be back. Okay, we've got our hot pan of buttermilk cornbread out fresh out of the oven. Now, you gotta remember the skillet is very, very hot, okay? So I normally let this sit out uh, for two or three minutes after I take it out of the oven, and I run my butter knife around it, and you can sort of tell, see how it's lifting up good? So it is loose from the bottom of the pan. Okay, and I'm going to flip, try not to touch that hot pan. Okay, so I'm going to get my mitts, and I'm gonna flip this over. And look at that. See those golden brown pieces? That's that cornmeal that was sizzling when we put it um, in our pan. So look at there. That is some hot, fresh, good cornbread. Okay. And I'm going to get a paper, whoop, a paper towel out. Let's get another one out. I didn't like that one. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna get our paper towel right there. Okay, so look at it. Oh my gosh, it is so, if you can hear it, it's so crusty and so good in these edges. Just sizzled a while ago when I poured that cornmeal in. So I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna cut hubby, poppy, as he's known at school, Mr. Danny. I'm gonna cut a piece, okay? So you can cut this into eighths, is what you can do. I'm gonna cut a piece like that. Oh, I want you to look at that. Oh, it is piping hot, okay? You look, are you uh, ready to taste test this? I sure am. Okay, I'm gonna put a little Pat of butter on top and just let it sort of melt over there. Look at that. <laughs> that is so good. Okay, we're gonna let that melt and let Danny take a bite and he's gonna taste test it for me, okay? The butter has melted, so come on over here, Poppy, and we're gonna let you take a Bite. Oh, best cornbread in the house, right here. Look at that butter right there. Oh, <laughs> man. Is it good? Mmm. Mmm. I'm gonna eat some beans with that, and I'm ready. Mmm. Potato cakes. Don't forget Potato that. Potato cakes. Yes.
that crust, guys, I'm telling you, this right here, that iron skillet makes that crust. It is so crunchy and so good. Mmm, mmm, that is good. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have probably half of this um, plate, maybe, maybe we might have one extra piece left over. But we're, the rest of this, I'm going to, when we get done tonight with supper, I'm gonna take the rest of this after it cools, I'm gonna put it in a Ziploc bag. I'm gonna store it in my refrigerator. Now, either tomorrow or the next day, like I said, this video is gonna take a couple of days to go through, but I'm gonna come back and the rest of this cornbread, we are gonna turn it into cornbread dressing. So there's side dishes that you're turning into brand new side dishes, which is a really good cheap way to use up all your leftovers, you know? So, if you guys like this, stay tuned, which here in a few seconds, I'll be back and we'll be making cornbread dressing. So let's stay tuned for that, okay? Now that's some good cornbread. <laughs>